We're going to create an IIS website, do a little demonstration with Internet Information Services and Windows Server 2016. So let's start by going to the Add Roles and Features, and we'll install the IIS role. So let's go ahead and click Next. And from here, we're going to go over to our server roles that you see, and we're going to choose Web Server IIS. Click Add Features when prompted. Go ahead and click Next. We'll skip the additional features. Click Next. And now we see the server, uh, the role services. And the role services are basically a subset of the web server itself for IIS that we selected earlier. So we can select additional options here if we want, but just for basic website creation and connectivity, we won't need to check anything additional than what you see here. Let's go ahead and click Next and Install. This can take anywhere from 30 seconds up to several minutes, depending on the speed of your server that you're running it on. Our installation is complete. Go ahead and click Close. And then we'll go up to the Tools menu in Server Manager, and we will open up our Internet Information Services Manager. And we can see on the left-hand side the name of our server, which is Router01. And we'll go ahead and open the default site. And at this point, there's really nothing in our site. So we're going to need to add some uh, content so we can see what it'll look like from another computer. Let's go over to the right where it says Basic Settings. And we can see the default location is going to be our C drive, followed by INET Pub and WWW Root. So let's go down to our File Explorer and go to that site. And we'll create a document and we'll make a new default document that we'll be using for our website. Now this is not a video that's going to cover programming, HTML, all that kind of stuff. This is more about how to use IIS. So let's go and click on INET Pub, and we'll go to WW Root, and we're going to create a new text file, and we'll just call it companyweb.txt. Hit Enter. And we'll put in, welcome to our site. So now we'll go ahead and save it. And we'll close out of it. And then we're going to go back to our default website in IIS. And we're going to go to where it says default document. So let's double click on default document. And we're going to click add. So the name of the document is going to be companyweb.txt. Click OK. And it's going to look for the name of that file in the location that we just chose. Now let's go back for a second to our file, our company web, uh, txt. And you notice that it's showing the .txt, .txt. And, and we didn't notice that when, when it was first created. And that's because under View, if you have the file name extensions box unchecked, you won't notice that it's got two TXTs next to it. So this won't work unless we get rid of one of these. So let's go back to where it says View. Make sure we're looking at File Name Extensions. And then we can get rid of one of these TXT extensions. And hit Enter. Make sure it opens OK. It does. All right, now we're good to go. So now this company web.txt file is going to be valid. Let's go ahead and click back on the default website again so we see all of our files. Now we've logged into our domain controller. And from here, we're going to make a change by going to Tools and then DNS. So we need to add a new domain here so we can go ahead and get some resolution for this new site. So we'll create a new zone. Right-click, choose New Zone. We'll choose a primary zone, but we're not going to choose this to, to store this in Active Directory. This is going to be a non-Active Directory zone. And we'll call it widgetllc.com. Go ahead and click Next. Choose the defaults. And Finish. Now we're going to click on widgetllc.com, which is different than our .internal domain you see here. This is our Active Directory one. This is going to be our website. So we're going to right-click and we're going to choose to create a new host. And we're going to call it www. And we're going to give it the IP address of the server where we installed our new IIS website. Go ahead and click Add Host. And it was successful. So now we have some resolution. 
let's go ahead and go back to our router. And let's just make sure that we can ping our new record. So let's just go ahead and open up a command prompt or PowerShell, doesn't matter which one. We'll ping www.widgetllc.com. And look at that, it works. All right, so now we're gonna go to a workstation and see if we can open this up. So we'll go to a client running Windows 10 and we'll log in. And let's go ahead and open up www.widgetllc.com. And welcome to our site. So it worked. Our default website is now pointing to widgetllc.com. And there's the text file that we created. We're back in IIS again, and this time we're gonna make a new website. We're gonna be creating what's called a virtual directory. So we're gonna to go to our default website, we're gonna right click, and we're gonna click Add Virtual Directory. And we're gonna call this intranet, because it's just gonna be used by our internal people. We'll click on Physical Path, and we'll click on the C drive, and we'll click Make New Folder, and we'll call it intranet. Click OK. And if you want, you can click on Test Settings, make sure it's working OK. So the authentication works, the authorization, that one is always gonna show that triangle, so don't worry about that. Go ahead and click OK. So now underneath our default website, we see this virtual directory. Now don't confuse this with virtual machines because it has nothing to do with that. Well, let's go ahead and go back into our folder here, go to the C drive, open up our intranet folder, and we're going to create another text document. And this time we're going to call it intranet dot txt and again make sure that we're not doing the double txts so we'll just go ahead and hit enter and then this time we're going to say welcome to our internal site and we'll go ahead and save and close that and make sure that it's spelled right doesn't have the double extensions at the back if you're not sure just make sure you go to view and make sure file name extensions are checked all right, so now that one's created, let's go to our intranet, and we need to go into our default document. So we created a default document for our default site, now we need to do it for uh, this new intranet site. So let's go ahead and click Add, and we'll type intranet.txt. And make sure it's at the top, which it is, and we can go back to our default website and double click on default document and we see company web is on top. So these are really being treated as two completely different sites, which is great. All right, so now we need to go uh, back to our client and we need to see if we can open up this new site. So go back to client and this time we're going to do forward slash intranet. So that's the name of our virtual directory, hit enter. And look at that, welcome to our internal site. So we've created a virtual directory website as well as a default website. Let's go back and make one other change. We're going to make a change to IIS by saying, hey, let's have a second website that uh, is going to be listening on a completely different port, and that'll be for, say, orders from people from the outside world. So this time we're going to go ahead and create a whole new website. So let's right-click on Sites, choose Add Website, and we'll call this one Orders and we'll give it a physical path. Once again, C drive, and we'll choose make new folder. We'll call this one orders, click okay. And we'll go back to our C drive here. And we'll see, we see our orders folder and we'll give it a new text file and we'll call it orders.txt, hit enter. And we'll say, please place an order. All right, so we'll save that, close it, and we're got, we have to give this a host name. So we're going to give this a host name for people from the outside because we've already got www.widgetllc.com being listened to on our default site. So we need to have a different one for this particular website. So we'll keep it simple. Call it orders.txt. 
www.widgetllc.com. Now, I realize on a real ordering site, we're going to be using SSL, listing on port 443. But in this particular case, we're just doing a scenario where it can show you how to use different ports. So we're going to change the port. You see the default port is 80. We're going to change that to 281. And again, if this is a secure site, we would change this to HTTPS. But we're not creating a certificate for this particular video, so we'll just go ahead and click OK. So there's our orders. Now let's go to default document once again. Let's add, and let's give it the orders dot txt file click ok make sure it's on top which it is fantastic now let's go back to our domain controller and we need to go ahead and add that host record for orders otherwise this won't work right so let's go ahead and go to widgetllc.com click new host and we'll call this orders now you see it automatically appends the widgetllc.com because that's the zone that i'm in and we'll once again give it the same IP address because it's being hosted on the same server. And let's go ahead and click Add Host. Now, if this was on the outside, you'd be doing this, say, at your Network Solutions account or GoDaddy account, something like that, well, who's ever hosting your DNS. But this is all internal, so we're doing it from our internal DNS server. Let's go back to Router01, make a change to the firewall. So this is a pretty easy fix here. So we're just going to go into our control panel. And we're going to go to our Windows Firewall. And here we'll click on Advanced Settings and Inbound Rules. Now, as you can see, port 80 was open by default. We didn't even have to do that one. But 81 is not. So let's go ahead and create a new inbound rule. And we'll point it to a port. And that port is going to be TCP 81. Click Next. Allow the connection, all different types of profiles, and we'll just call it port 81 for the name, and we'll click Finish. So now we're back in our client. We've gone ahead and opened up our port 81 in our firewall. We've set up IIS. Now we're ready to connect to this new port. So let's go ahead and put in orders.widgetllc.com. Then we put after that colon 81, and the 81 is for the port that we're using. Otherwise, it defaults to port 80. So we'll hit Enter. And look at that, please place an order. So it worked. So we're open on port 81. So we've created a default website, a virtual directory website, and also a uh, port 81 website. And you can use any port that you want that's not already being used by some other device. And that pretty much covers the tutorial on setting up IIS using different types of features. And of course, there's lots more that you can learn in IIS, and we'll try to cover those in upcoming videos.